there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in Tier No, the last series of Europe, in which we must talk about, uh, by the canola field. Xiao Ziyang was no rider, but the sheer distance of northwestern lands dictates every man to be either on a saddle or a parish. With his left hand holding the rein and his right hand his mouth are equally firm, the man slowed down ever so slightly. Not because of the endless ocean of golden blooms around Dulan, but of the unresting sand and gravel ahead, forming a dark tide on the horizon. He'd heard from his colleagues that the Mongols want nothing short of his death, knowing that the Golmud government has effectively given up on any means of real punishment. He'd know they'd come for him. He'd slaughtered those reactionaries. Maybe now it's his turn. If it is the hour, he would not die without bringing a few more reactionaries with him, but by the god of war, perhaps, have seen too much bloodshed these days, or he's simply planning for an even bigger one somewhere else left Zhao alive. It was a convoy of the new ruler of Dulan, who Kili and his men with the red banner flying high. Good to see you these days, young comrade. Now my task is done. I <clears throat> I shall wish you safety there. Zhao paused a little, but for the determined communists, of course, he had no fears for himself, only for his friend. With his actions, what would there be cost on the party's reputation in Kili's work? That wicked place is full of feudal dogs not wanting to give up their so-called birthrights by an inch. And the nationals aren't ain't any better. You will have much to do, comrade Hu. We have many trickles tricks up our sleeves to deal with them, don't you worry. If they cooperate, all is good. If they dare to come for you or us, my platoon will watch that river as red as our flag. The man sighed. Why does it have to be like this? Why on earth can't they understand socialism and work towards an, a righteous cause of equality? He dismantled his very own estates for distribution of land, but these Mongols seem to be doing the exact opposite. Well, that would be the last resort, comrade. The party isn't exactly happy about the killings, you see, especially when they aren't Han. Ethnic unity and stuff. They are sending me for Golmud. I'll be in luck to not have my party member status stripped. He, who suddenly busted into laughter, much to Zhao's annoyance and confusion. He did not expect a man grin on that matter. So that's why he took only slightly merrier than a graveyard. You are entirely mistaken, comrade. Chairman Gao himself heard, heard of it and was highly approval of you, or has high approval of you. You are getting a promotion. Wait, what? And right now we're currently finishing up alert the government. So if you like to hear about that, please go right ahead. In which we are going to have a chat with the army next, because we want to improve the stability here. Of course, the Mongol nomads are no match against the NRA, but... It would be optimal to prevent the rebellion from happening altogether. We must prepare the army and inform them of this potential uprising. Pulling the army and civilian government in close cooperation to put down the demagogues for the sake of maintaining stability. Because goodness. Oh, so we have two and a half. And five command power and decrease attention by 10%. 15%. Wait, so 50 political power for 15%. We get 20 political power and five command power for 10%. That is absolutely not worth it. And, um, well, can seriously improve our legitimacy in the state, but it requires a lot of shady deals to convince party hardliners. So if we admit minorities enter the government, is that a one-time deal? I don't mind if it's a one-time deal, then that's okay. But if not, hmm. So really, this one's probably the best one to do. Because tension is too high. Uh, stability is not great. Concessions to, to the locals. Increases stability by 15%. 25 political power. 15 political power, 10%. And 10, and 10 command power, 15%. Honestly, I'd rather do destroy bandits. Let us get more stability. So, with stability... Because we need more stability than ethnic tension, right? Ten. Oh, we can't do that one, too. Oh, whoops. Well, at least 35% stability now. Yeah. Let's make sure we got enough stability. But, a stick in hand with a carrot. Supreme Excellence is he who conquers foes with a bloodshed. Why should we place ourselves against them in the first place, after all? The Republic tolerates them as equal citizens. Yes, projects may have damaged our, our reputation, but this situation can be easily fixed. Some silver to locals elite should bring a small a smile onto their faces. Gonghi County Rent Reduction Report to Chairman Gao, Chairman of Qinghai Province Ma Bu Luan from Prefect Tian Tian Sheng Lan. Subject Gonghi County Rent Reduction Report. Despite our efforts, cooperation between the county government and landowners is at a minimal level. Since enforcement of the Land Reform Act last month, violence in the county has increased by more than 30 to 20 percent. Local elites are evidently backing militia organizations, which are now equipped with swords and muskets. Their presence, roughly 120 men, harassed multiple workers and threatened to take their lives. Allocated funds are running out, and the progress is still slow. NRI's 7th Security Regiment oversees a region of stretch too thin for us to have proper security. And corruption, too, is making our job more than difficult. On paper, our garrison strength is roughly that of a company, but I observe at most 30 men at the barracks. They are currently of little use for daily routine other than to stare at those brigands. Many of my colleagues are desperately filing resignation, or filing resignations as I write this report. In order for the legislation to be carried out effectively across countries like Gong He, I hereby request additional military personnel, preferably NRA regulars to suppress rebels and bandits elect to restore order to Gong He. Some people just cannot be reasoned with in a second hand. 
Money is, of course, not sufficient to convince everyone some cannot be bought that we respect, but they can be crushed in more ways than plain, plain bribery. The single reason why Mongolia cannot survive between us and the Russians is the fact that regionalism reigns supreme in their lands, that they value their banners more than the state, that historically the banners have posed themselves against one another. Divide at uh, Impera. We will reward the good behaving clans and impose restrictions on the ones that don't. Soon enough they will fall one by one. And since we're here anyways, 35% offer support. There you go. That's a little bit... I'm not sure that has a really big impact on us or not. It seems like it might, but it could be completely wrong. And a stick in hand, of course. Now stability as what? Hopefully 45%? 45%, 22.5. Land reform. We want more land reform. I'm not really sure what we can do with all the other decisions. It seems like this is just kind of crazy, but do what must be done. Despite our efforts, conflicts are so common. If we cannot reverse the course of riots with haste, then the Qinghai government, its place earned by the toil and blood of martyrs of China, will be facing risks too great for us to handle. Anything else here? Um, is it just influence stuff? There goes Madagascar. Yeah, just influence stuff. Cool. Well, the iron is hot. Well, now the agendas of, of enforcing peace is on top priority. Let us continue the righteous effort to pacifying Qinghai. While the troops are on the move, we shall clear them village by village. Good. And we got one day left. All right. So what's going on here? So we have. We don't have to deal with this one, which is really nice. Uh, offer... I don't want to do this, because... I'm not sure. Mo analyze modernization. State stability will drop by 20%. Ethnic tension will increase by 10%. Ooh. As 1% base stability, war support, and 3% monthly population in all held territories. Builds a civilian factory instantly in one of the states within the region. So how do we get... So what's the point of, like, doing this, then? Offer support. By 10%. And if we do this one, reduces by 7.5. Well, it's currently that much. Hmm. I do want less of that. I'm not sure if this is really worth doing. I don't know. I just want to go to war, man. Then again, we're playing TNO. What do you expect? Society. Further social reforms we enacted last year. Completing social reforms as part of introduction to the Jai B mechanic. Our campaigns may have relieved uh, some stress in illiteracy f and food security. Uh, but what we have done is far from enough. Water scarcity still haunts Qinghai and hopes among our people is rather low. This will be our priority over everything else except for the minorities. But, you know what? They're always going to complain anyway. So, we're losing political power, it looks like now, are we? Yes, we are. That sucks. And we're losing a lot of support here. Daily change plus zero. Slowly it's going up. Society. We win the home front. All of Qinghai's machinery brought in by the refugees fleeing from Sichuan and Shangxi. And for 17 years, these are the only reliable source of firearms. It's time to expand a little industry and rush the farmers into the factories. Now with words, which I like the political power, and with actions. Selecting this focus will allow additional reforms to be passed with the listen to them focus, but grants less political power. Notice other political factions will also receive a minor popularity boost. Huh. Um, I'm not really sure. With actions? Additional reforms. Maybe you want to get more reforms. And we've got quite a few comments here as well, so... Uh, I'm not really sure. So listen to them. Well, further modernization by completing social reforms and changing our problems with reduced penalties. We should also improve our society in various fields slowly. Oh, crap. That's not good. Um, I think maybe we'll go with actions. Let's try with actions. So if you want to read with words, please go ahead. Any revolutionary mud face, uh, the inevitable choice of being accepting to pragmatism and holding true to what was said. Too much compromises have been made. Too many times has the national revolutionary government failed the people. They simply cannot wait and must not wait. Of course, we cannot uh, simply achieve the goals with one big step, but progress, progressive changes will eventually make dreams a reality. A dream of China where people can live and flourish. Uh, yeah, maybe, I guess. Well, let's see what happens. I'm not, uh, like, okay, a lot of the comments want me to go down a certain way. I'm just thinking, like, let's just go down a way. We'll see what happens. Institutionalized water supply. Qinghai Plateau being the origin for both the Yangtze and Yellow River. It's surprisingly very arid. This comes down to the high runoffs that led to the majority of fresh water being fed into either the rivers, which are hard to access, or Qinghai Lake, which is one of the largest saltwater lakes in the world. To solve this problem, we can look west to Tupan with its extensive Kadi system, providing water all year round. Nice. Wait, we have rising tension in the northwest. Uh, how much tension are we talking about, son? Oh, well. Oh. It's pretty much the same amount. Hopefully it doesn't get too high. Right? 
Ten, oh, that's not bad. 10% ethnic tension and 6% civility is pretty good, actually. Now listen to them. Many of our changes are planned and executed without consent from people, nor do we hear their needs. Chang Ching Kuo, head of the KMT, however, proposes that he can repeat the successes he had in Jiangxi by setting up a better and clearly defined way people of Qinghai can grieve to the officials, one which he will lead. This can certainly help us efficiently tackle problems, though it may also end up having Chiang leveraging too much power. Replace no minimum wage with trinket minimum wage. We lose max factories in the state, which I don't like. We get better poverty and industrial expertise. And get more stability. We have a 14-hour workday, which hurts our output, which sucks, but we do get some more stability. We restrict child labor, which is disappointing, but whatever. Um, and we get more authoritarian democracy. Alright, it's a give and take. It's definitely a give and take. I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad. It's a definitely a give and take. And I work on our guns as well. We actually have... We actually have already, Huh. The Maw Cavalry Brigades actually have that stuff. Um, yeah, looking not too bad there either, so. Listen to him. We're gonna lose... Oh, God, we're gonna lose more political power. That sucks. If that's the case, let's at least spend it for now. Who's leading the Burgundian system here? Yu Zhao. Zhao. Yeah, these two are not worth doing yet, so. Or we just do that. Collect some political power first, and then blow it all. I like that idea more. Destroy bandits, getting more... Eh, I'll do it anyways, why not? Nice. Now yeah, listen to him. Academia Sinica. With literacy slowly expanding, it's time finally the time to reestablish Academia Sinica, merging various universities that have brought their intellectuals and professors with the KMT into Qinghai. There remains a question whether or not we should also incorporate the communist institutions, most notably the anti-Japanese military and political university. While their expertise would help, it would certainly lead to a surge in our influence. We get more political power, we get public education for more daily political power. Cost goes up, but that's okay, whatever. The military, let's do infrastructure. Will that help us a lot? What's going on here? Oh, death of some good some dude. Uh, we lose political power. Changes in these guys. Uh, let's do that one first. The National Revolutionary Army, the armed section of the Chinese Nationalist Party, is despite the records, the last hope for Qinghai. Since the retreat of the Northwest in 45 after trade of Fu Zhu Yi's sudden surrender, the 84th Division, men of the NRI 17th Corps of the 1st Military Region originally, and Shangxi became the core of our small force, consisting on paper four divisions, but in reality just three with another brigade, a classic AMT undermanned military. At least political interference in the army, uh, which was rampant back when then, can now be tackled. The NRA should no longer be the soldiers of the party, but of China. No longer will the recruits swear loyalty to any members of the party, but, of course, to China. And which eventually will hopefully begin the preparations. But, you know what? It takes time. Holy crap, that's 42 days? Holy crap, that's a long time. Yeah, I'm not really sure what we can do here. If we don't have any political power, we can't do anything, man. We have a lot of support. We're all the way to the, uh, the tens, hundreds, thousandth place for support. I don't think this... I don't know how much, mo the, how much content this mod has... But, like, obviously we're playing it, so I'm interested in seeing how far we can go. We need anti-tank. Holy crap. We definitely need a lot of anti-tank. I don't want to lose any more guns. Um, Yeah, we can't afford to lose guns first. Anti-tank is going to have to suffer then. So be it. So be it. This power is getting slightly better. Anything else here? Industrial XP is not getting worse, which is nice. And we got about two and a half months left for vacuum tube competing, which is fine. Oh yeah, boys. Oh yeah. Hopefully by doing this, we don't lose too much political power every single day. 0.91. That's slightly better. So, time for military stuff. Even though we're going to lose more political power. Now we only get minus 0 0.08. Great! Kaya, alright, we shall fight. I don't want to lose video. The infrastructure. The infrastructure in Qinghai can only be described as outdated. Long ago, the peoples moved east and west on the trails of the Hexi Corridor, hardened by camels and merchants traveling back and forth for 2,000 years. How? No, why would the Azure Seas need any proper roads? But as additional military and civilian crammed themselves into Qinghai, it's evident that, would that some renovations are, of course, needed. Look, let's map it out. The hilly plateau of Qinghai provides close and unsuitable area for modern roads, and the steep rivers mean uh, any proper crossing would require astronomical amount of resources for us. Luckily, theirs may also be key for road extension campaigns. Communists are already suggesting a thorough land survey to locate river valleys flat enough for roads, combining with working the minority to utilize their local knowledge and pinpointing suitable river crossings. Not bad. Build the Ma Yuan Trail. 
General Ma Ji Yuan, and the Ma Clique pointed out that Qing'a cannot build nor does she need highways throughout the land. Flat, proper asphalt roads should only be allocated to necessary areas, while the rest must be kept in mostly secluded areas for military supply. If we were to deter the Japanese from cutting our arteries off, the best option is obvious. I have no defined supply routes at all. We we'll work towards establishing an engineer regiment dedicated to planning and creating the most efficient yet shrouded movement or method of communication and movement. Oh, get the car. It should be a long-term project dedicated to not only facilitate our troops to defeat Tibet, but also act critical method and circumnavigating Japanese air superiority and bog down their war machine. Nice. And gold mood. Gold mood is their only capital due to Xinjiang, Xinning's proximity to the Hui state. Compared to the cities of Han areas, Gold Mood is an ancient but small, too small for the government to stretch her legs, but it does not have to be the case. Distance wise, Gold Mood is positioned on a straight line between the southern Xinjiang and Tian Shui. Safety wise, it is far behind the front with the Japanese. It is potential. It has its potential of a transportation hub remains unrealized for centuries. We're gonna change that here. In Xin or Xin Ying. Pacified West, Jin Ying may not live up to its name just yet, but it's nonetheless the industrial heart of the Northwest government. Building up proper roads leading in and out of the city could seriously improve the logistics between the mines and the factories to produce more guns and, of course, raw, raw material. Oh, that can do be pretty nice. We're not going to get that one done, are we? <coughs> Followed up and in the mountains. The Kilin, Kilin Mountains are our only natural barrier and the sole reason why General Tsuji Dare not venture deep into the province, unlike the Japanese intruders who have only came to pillage. We know every mountain pass, every oasis, and every cave of the Great Mountain. Establishing a sophisticated reconnaissance system will ensure the invaders will pay for every inch of land they occupy. With blood, death, and something even more hor horrifying than death. Knowing that we will hunt and starve them down. That's a good old pastime, but link them up. The project has been mostly successful in various areas, but if they are not united like China of old, they can only do little against foes. We shall cover Xinghai, or Qinghai, under one web of transportation, one that will exploit every advantage the nature has to offer. One that will earn us victories, one that will deliver rice to hungry every hungry man. We'll lose more political power, get some more infrastructure, for the modernization, nice. Reduce poverty amongst farmers and make life out of here slightly easier. We lose a lot of stability in Qinghai and add more ethnic tension, or well, what else is new? Limit civilian usage. We'll get more political power too. And we get more stability and reduce ethnic tension, so we're going to get more stability, or we're going to lose stability overall, and get more ethnic tension overall. At peace, these routes don't have to be a military privilege. The infrastructure will work also to benefit the locals and the society in general, which honestly is probably a good idea. So, and after this, we're going to help lower uh, political, not political stuff. We're going to lower tension. Nice. And it's lagging so hard. It's time for some comments. Okay. So someone says. We should go down the Kami path in another attempt. Sounds like a good idea. Someone also says we should go down the, the Democratic Kuomintang, or the right and old guard route. Someone also says we should... Uh, this is a very promising submod for Tino, and it absolutely is. I'm very interested in seeing how far this mod can go. Someone also says we should do a, or get a slightly leftist government to stand up against Japan because they're very conservative or right-wing. Someone also says we should go with a neutral or centrist government because we want to be balanced. Uh, another person said that we should get Qinghai to restore the Republic of China, which I hope we can someday. That'd be awesome. And then I should go with a fully liberal democratic China. So there's all sorts of suggestions all around, but we shall fight. China, despite it being the bastion of East Asian culture that embedded patriarchy into much of Asia, knows many extraordinary females that would devote themselves beyond their mere families but the state. And so is the case in such a desperate hour. Currently, females in Qinghai are mostly limited to serving in roles like logistics and field hospitals beyond the front, but more are volunteering to take up the rifles to fight the Japanese devils like the partisans of Bob or Bo Yibo of East. As China is uh, on the verge of extinction, no longer can the new generation abide to tradition, ladies will march alongside the men. <sighs> equal rights and equal fights. I get more critical population, too. Total service equality. That's right, everyone, we can go shoot the women now. For better or for worse. Let's see. Alright, so okay, so we have land reform, we've done social reform, we have done infrastructure, final modernization cost 75 PP. We are we have literally no stability here. Uh how does that affect us? Does that affect us really badly? I have no idea. The worst has passed. Um The worst has passed. Modernization efforts. Seems like really much has really happened here. So, is there any point doing this? Like, what are the, what are the penalties for like not doing this? Because we have, we're trying to modernize, but it's impossible to. For China, 
Many from the 17th Corps and remnants of the 1st Military Region just so happened to be the refugees from the Northeast, from the land ruled by that illegal regime, so-called Mangshu Guo. They are the people of a forgotten age and the few units that still possess high morale in the battle for to return to their homelands. Let these Northeasterners speak aloud before their army. Remind them of the rightful lands of the dragon. A living person tells stories will be more effective than just painting a map. We gotta save political power then. With the two brothers united, with a detachment of the army and the party, we can finally engage in close cooperation with the communist forces. Of course, every KMT would not admit, but the communists have always been the other pillar holding up Qinghai. A column up that up to now has always been oppressed every now and then in a priority of military supplies, personnel, and more. Thus, it's not a surprise the communist party still holds suspicion towards the KMT, helping to defend but refraining from joining the NRA in raiding efforts. Once again, we shall negotiate and find common grounds. Once again, the invincible Eighth Route Army shall be reborn. We they we are really going communist now, aren't we? Kingdom of Calcasia? Like an unstoppable flood. Two volunteers. Like a lightning. Ooh, I like that. More attack and defense would be really good to get, actually. As much as I want to get two more of these guys, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. I mean, is it is two and a half percent more attack better? You get more speed as well. Honestly. I like quality more. So if things go really poorly, we'll do, we'll see what happens. Too much of the NRA allowed in sheer numbers to overwhelm the enemy. It's been proven again and again, sometimes with positive examples like the defense of the Sihong Warehouse, that sometimes one can win with less forces in his hand. We'll devote even more resources in arming existing troops with even more modern firearms so that they may be immovable like a mountain and attack like raging fire, with no worry to supplies whatsoever. We have actually more divisions. And with a clear goal ahead. We cannot yet afford a war at Tsuji, but another target has emerged. The Hermit Kingdom, that is the Bet Lang South, which is illegally occupied Yushu, is in the middle of a potential crisis. The 14th Dalai Lama, along with the supporters for reforming or reform, is engaging in a silent political struggle against the Kashag, whose reactionary regime is intended as immovable as the Himalayas. It may be finally the hour we turn and go on the offensive. And so you think we more, get more political power too, so. So, Tibet, you are a skunk waiting to get snuffed out. I don't know why I said that type of analogy, but whatever. Um, I'll get more land I attacked. Yeah, that'd be really good. We're still isn't putting fire every god dang day. God dang it. And you get more speed, so that helps out. Now, these guys volunteers. I don't know if they're infantry or horses. I prefer the horses right now since we're in China, but begin the preparations. Finishing the final touches of Qinghai, we look to the south, to our lost lands. The Tibetans may be a few in armed with outdated weapons, but they are on the defensive. In addition, the Hui state is ever wary of our movements. If we're to invade Yushu, we must do it quickly. While keeping an eye out for Gansu, or we may face dire consequences. That doesn't sound very good. Algerian war, huh? Please let us modernize. Kunming? Probably getting slightly better here. We have negative five stability. Isn't that great? Probe them. We like probing people? I guess so. Before we even strike, infiltration teams will cross the boards and provide us with crucial information on the movements of the Tibetan army. Know thy enemy and thyself, and every battle shall be a victory. We get 30 more guns. We lose 50 men. We already have don't we don't, don't have manpower, so that's okay. Quiet on the plateau. Oh, we still have no political power. Weaken them. The Tibetan army is still organized parallel to medieval forces, dividing units into regiments which are recruited from various towns with no sophisticated command structure. This, it, thus, it is but certain that they would have a hard time communicating with each other efficiently. It would be a real shame if someone outside decided to commit to a military deception using spies, briberies, and carefully placed rumors. Nice, they use a lot of war support. And convince them. The disparity between the Kashyag and its proximity to Britain influenced India cannot be overstated. When the Tibetans decided to send students to India and hope to modernize themselves and fend off us, they've only dug their own graves. Educated with concepts of Western democracy and modern technology, Tibetan intellectuals find themselves lost in an ignorant land of autocracy. Oppositions including the Tibetan Communist Party and Tibet Improvement Party are de facto banned, but they never stopped trying to overthrow the Kashyag. It would be a real, real shame for the Kashyag if the C TCP and the TIP mysterious received additional funding and guns. Can you do reforms? Please, let's do reforms. Finalized modernization. We did it. Hey, we went from negative to like 10% stability to 0%. We've modernized. Do we get an event for this? Oh, please tell us we get an event. I want an event for it. One more paradise. <coughs> Military intel has clearly shown that Tibetans may have an advantage over us. Many are worried if we can even pull this one off. Let's organize a parade to reassure their minds. Modern oh, look at that. Offensive war penalty, penalty stability modifier, more war sports stability, monthly population, training day and night, which is good. We get to more daily army speed, which is nice. Rapid illiteracy sucks. Worse is pass. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if we're able to enact modernization in our territories, a free China can reap the benefits for advance into the East. That's awesome. I love it. We've got to start off somewhere, right? So start small. 
All the preparations, all the compromises, all the build-ups is finally here. Finally, we can proudly send forth the Righteous Army of Liberation. Send forth a declaration of war. It will not be on paper, but thousands of men marching with the flag of the White Sun onto Lhasa. Nice. We're probably going to die trying. We got a little bit of manpower, too. Look at that. We got a little bit of manpower as Russia's killing itself. Happy 64, everybody. Before we begin, though, let's just go ahead and say, like, I hope we do well. I can't imagine that we wouldn't do well, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, so. And I apologize for this lag, or just, you know, slowness. But it is what it is. The Year of the Dragon. The Year of the Dragon or Jai Chan is looming. Our surprise attack during February will be certain to surprise the archaic army. Let the liberation of Yushu be the gift of the National Revolutionary Army offered to all the Chinese. The NRA is going to kick some booty here. Even though I still need to play the, uh, uh, the other guys. So. Can we actually win and just move in? Please tell me you guys can win. Two, oh, they have horses too, which is smart. Oh, it's literally two combat width. They're literally two combat with as well. That's awesome. Year of Lay Dragon. Nice. Battle for Yushu. Our key objective would be to march in through the Yushu region as soon as possible, so to disorganize the reinforcements and prevent Tibetans from offering a proper resistance. Thus, we shall deal the first blow as much strength as possible, with as much firepower as Ching Ha can offer. Long have our mortars and precious artillery pieces remain untouched, let us feed their insatiable barrels with all we have and invite the Tibetans to a splash preview of heck. One push, revenge, or defeat. We get more attack. We lose a lot of army XP gain. Holy crap. We get 10% more attack for 30 days. That's not bad. And they lose speed, which I'm honestly okay with. We should just we should do well here regardless, right? So, uh, we probably don't really need to pay attention, but our brethren to the south. The Zhikong province, loyal to a righteous effort, agreed to enter a state of war with their enemy to overcome the Tibetan foe. Though their enthusiasm is plausible after all these years of hardship, the equipment and organization certainly outdated. To change this course, we will invest in Liu's forces. To win the war, we must look south to, only, to the, only, the only other loyal province, Ji Kong, the 24th Army. Bolstering three infantry divisions under command of Liu Wenhui could be extremely a useful asset. I think we're doing well already, so... Are they doing border raids or something, too? Huh. Can we just go straight for the capital? I would love if we could just do that. Head straight on in, boys. They're literally just killing off their own divisions. We've lost 13. Oh, they're already in war. Versus 1,000. Nice. Is that an artillery battalion? Actually, we got some stuff here. Oh, stability, what does it do? We have really high cooperation, which is really good. Um, does it matter anymore? We got so much ethnic tension here, though. Oh, look, the 24th Army. Holy, 20, 75, per, oh my gosh, 75 division speed. 24th Army, part of the 9th military region, is a respected formation who cost the Imperial Japanese Army more defeats and death than any other theater. Yet now the 24th is merely shadow of this glorious past, as it's only capable of self-defense duties. Most of their army, defending against possible attacks from the Tian, Song Yao, are still not aware of the conflict. We must inform their officers and rush their forces to the defense of the Jin Xia's river's right bank. Please let us get their capital. I just want to get their capital, man. They are definitely coming in with a lot of force, so... Move on in, boys. Move on in. Honestly, if we could just, like, get one of these tiles here, god dang it. They're throwing in a lot more divisions than I thought they had. I'll be honest, man. Look at the 24th, Arms Zhikong. <coughs> Military coup, very cool. Zhikong uh, is not known for mass production of weapons. Well, then this remains true to our day to day. The loyal sons of China, albeit brave men, must not bring their Dai Dao to a gunfight. We should have some spare guns in our arsenal to fit for a military service. And reach out to you. Due to the terrain and distance, the Golden Mood government has been somewhat distant from Yan. This is a dangerous signal, as Chinese government is only too used to this kind of situation and its consequences on China. We'll reaffirm our ties with Liu while sending a new liaison, so for the co cooperation, of course. They would not be used to extend a reach in Zhikang. No, no, no. Of course not. Hmm. Lhasa, please. How many men have died in this conflict? 3,000. We've lost 7. It seems like a lot, it's a lot worse, but right now we're doing relatively okay, so... I hope we're doing okay on our attacks. Do you have any upgrades you can get? Infantry? Uh, yeah, you might as well. Why not? We could do that one. Why not? Did we cut them off? Nice. Good. For now. For now. Tsu uh, is moving. Our worst years have become a reality. The first military region has received a dire news. Tsu Ji Masanobu notice our reduction in military presence and frequency of raids. Although we have expected this to happen sooner or later, we do not have much methods to counter him. After all, he commands two whole armies, more than double of what we have. It will be a battle even Sun Tzu himself would avoid. Much less the NRA would engage. We must come up with plans as soon as possible. Wait, if we... If we invasion imminent... What? What? It's like the National Folk delays movement. 
I kind of want to do some general attacks right now. Like, holy crap, we need it. We, we Did we lose a couple divisions? We'll get some more. Take the goddamn capital, you son of a r r rattlesnake. Okay, we won. Get up north. We can't fight the Hui people just yet. And we don't have on you guys either. Oh, that sucks. Big old booty holes. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, actually, since we have so much army XP, let's do this. Actually, make sure that we actually got it. Remove it. Literally just use guns. How many support equipment do we have? Do we have any support equipment? No. Nice. Okay, so. There we go. That'll be good. Thousand walks. To prevent two... Zhu Ji, from knowing our true strength, we shall show our forces as near when the NRA goes out all out for war. All we need to do is deter him from attacking. We'll be conscripting peasants to simply follow the army to make our forces look strong from afar. In addition, well, we will order the engineers to set up unnecessarily many encampments along our fluid border to trick him. To further this paranoia, the Chinese have yet another trick up our sleeve. Mobilize civilians to set up field kitchens alongside the Chilean mountain, such that when the Japanese spot the swirling smoke columns in the valleys, they will take them as army regiments camping. Oh. It's all done. Okay. The three rules and eight points. One of the key reasons why the communists were able to gather more popular support is due to their strict discipline and respect for civilian populations. Obviously, it was also something the KMT would like to implement, but rapid warlordism made it such that rules of engagement are things aware only to the directly controlled forces. To many civilians. The NRA is just that. Just the IJA, but Chinese, committing the same crimes and getting away without any real consequences. Now we have only so much force on hand. This strategy just so happens to make our pushes for a reformation also easier. We should bow to the communists when we need to learn. Make sure army is truly an army of liberation rather than just another plunder to Tibet's scene. Only forgiveness and cordial relations with the Tibetan civilians can turn them against the Kashagan solidify rule. Some establishing some level of ROE will benefit our starting situation. Yushu stability reduces detention. Okay, cool. The hardliners representing the old NRA would not be so happy except in Mao's institution. Hardliner support and legislative one decreased by seven and a half percent. More military planning. Ooh, lose, lose attack. That sucks. Uh, but how's this looking? So we have. Oh my gosh, we have so much here. It's all cost seven. Oh my gosh. Uh. Seems like that'd be a good thing to do, right? Infrastructure. So does it really affect, oh, like resistance and such? Low stability, resistance growth. Uh, no, not yet, huh? Well, we'll do, we'll see what happens. I forget which state. Which which state do we do? Was it this big one? Yeah, we did the big one. Wai Zhang. <coughs> An attack to shatter their spirits. Our attack has been met with stiff resistance from the Tibetans, which is to be expected. They have the home advantage, but this advantage is quickly fading. Without any means to produce firearms worthy of an even 18th century armies, for every rifle the Tibetans lose, they would have to replace them with matchlocks and arquebuses, or buses. The fact is felt thoroughly on their part while, still going, while we are still going. The rotting building that is Tibet just needs a precise strike for it to collapse altogether. Keep them in suspense if you wonder, but that will please go right ahead. And we are victorious. Well, you've done it. The Kashag has collapsed. The Dalai Lama nowhere in sight. While a contingent of our forces that watch the past state to pacify Nagadi in Tibet, the NRA will be returning swiftly to Qinghai for a glorious triumph. And to keep our eyes out for the Japanese, long have China seen no victories, and long have our nation in sheer darkness. This will change today. Our position is finally secured, and the people in ecstasy will declare Zongguo Wan Sui. Wan Sui, Wan Wan Sui. The Northwest Military Government we know as the Northwest Military Government. Okay, proper economy for you. Okay. Developer note, in the future updates, the Northwest will interact with India and the OFN sphere heavily to liberate the rest of Northwest China. Get more stability, get more political power. Is this the end of the mod? Please don't tell me it's the end of the mod, man. Please don't tell me. I, I'm, like, I'm liking what we're seeing here. This is... I love the GUIs. I love the love that's been put into this mod so far. Don't end it already, please. And we haven't done that much stuff, stuff here either. Ooh, we can reestablish administration. Changing of the guard. In a subcontinent with two regimes flying for control, the best thing a conscription hope for is to be thrown off the mountain. Or thrown to the mountains, at least. The border separating India and uh, Tibet is marked as clear as a ceasefire line between Delhi and Kolkata on maps, yet in reality is near non-existent. Shepherds and nomads will cross it all, all at will with their hosts of yaks snorting through as their ancestors did for centuries. 
through, though harsh with little entertainment to speak of, at least the garrison here can be left in peace. When the miserly sun finally spread light, rays of light upon the frozen valley, the Indians spot not the usual animals, but a convoy of men in the distance, in a single column not so different from marching ants. Rising their stand in Lee Enfields, the patrol advances to meet these strange intruders. Only as they approach closer did the blindingly white sun fall beyond mountains and their adversaries' face made visible. It became clear that these visitors, despite the ragged uniform and banners they have, are two professional soldiers, and that they are no Tibetans. Contact General Panathia. Directly, the Chinese are here. Let the oh my gosh, we are holy crap! Nice, the year of snake. Whoa, occupation Tibet. There can never be too much caution on the issue of Tibet. If it's not managed well, Tibet can turn into a drawback on our state rather than our backyard. Oh crap! Clear out holdouts. Jesus Christ! Contact the Dalai Lama. Make use of sympathizers. This is really in depth. The meetings. Let's not waste this one opportunity. Currently, you have no events. It will be added later. Oh, it sucks. Theocracy must go. Tibetan government could stay. Light up the forgotten corner? Why not? With the Tibet swept away, Qinghai is finally once more in direct contact with the outside world. For the first time in almost 20 years, China's desperate struggle finally sets the foundation for her to reconcile with the free nations of Asia and the free world, or the new world. Of course, we want to keep our profile minimal and our heads low so to prevent India and us from being threatened by fascists. Um, gains core. 35% stability. Oh my gosh. How are we supposed to get that much political power? Yushu Kang or Kong? So this is Tibet proper. Yushu is, if we can look over here, is over here. Um, is it bad to do this one first? I have no idea. I'm going to assume yes. Gains core, at least 75% of play. So we've already started that one, so we're just going to continue with this one. Um, honestly, there's no point in doing this stuff right now, so you might as well go for this stuff, right? Might as well. Because we'll get this up higher later on. Do we at least get some political power? Why don't we get any political power? Ah! A visit to Delhi. Many higher ups in the Republic of India still hold suspicion over our envoys. We understand the concerns as every mention of China nowadays is firmly linked to Japan or sphere. Thus, a visit by prominent KMT and communist members must be organized to make our message and intentions clear. Yeah, we're going to get social reforms next. And really try to lower ethnic tensions. <laughs> Eventually. Uh, meeting old friends, might as well. From our knowledge, India, despite its seemingly peacefulness, is in the middle of a fierce battle between the Japanese and Americans for influence. It's highly likely that certain members of the INC would mobilize American support in their equally confusing internal struggles. It would be beneficial if our envoys can get into contact with Americans, especially their intelligence personnel, with any means we possess. I forgot about this. We need to spend more political power here. Um, what happens if we cut the military spending? That seems like a really bad idea. If anything, we should boost it up. It's going to cost us slightly more, but who cares about debt, right? We have no interest on the debt, so whatever. <coughs> Get some more political power. Back on the world stage, the more we gaze out across the ocean, just like the old revolutionaries did, towards the last bastions of freedom. Our efforts have proven fruitful indeed. We still need to wait a dozen days or so until we can confirm anything, but one thing is certain. We need them, but the Americans need us too in cracking the bamboo curtain. After all, the rifle government of China is one of the last members of the Allies still kicking around. To uphold their image as the defenders of the liberty, they'd have to do something, and thus we expect good cooperation between Golmud, Delhi, and, of course, good old Washington. We're still getting more daily political power right now, too, so. And who died? Meeting old friends, Himmler. Has won the English Civil War. Good job, Himmler. Towards India. Uh, I know we should probably do this stuff as well, but, like, I don't want that resistance target. Towards the free world, ties of the CIA. You get more rifles, which is pretty nice. Manpower. Um, that's not bad. Established diplomatic stuff, consumer goods. We get more guns, popularity of stuff. Uh, towards the free world, I guess. The U U.S. of A. has supported our efforts, our war efforts during the Second World War. And if it wasn't for Tibet and treachery, like the Yankees would surely continue to do so. Unlike most other great powers since the last years of Qing, the U.S. has been particularly lenient on reparations, repatriations, and eager to build a positive relation with China. If there's any meaningful ally to China, the states is certainly one of them. Thus, American resources and a support is a critical factor that must be secured at all costs. This is so bad. Um, we're going to start lowering ethnic tension as much as possible. We just have to. Ties of the CIA. The U.S. government's yet to respond, but in the shadow pieces are already moving. CIA agents under the hastily resurrected Sako Division have already arrived at Golden Moon to facilitate communications. The first order of business is, of course, create a Chinese counteract or counterpart of Sako in our intelligence system. And there will be no better position or person to lead it than Shen Ziyue, the famous protege of Dai Li. Previously, Shen and his men remained mostly inactive, save for counterintelligence purposes due to our tight budget, but now a new opportunity arises. And aid from the Americans. 
While we cannot expect much material support, information is far from easy to bring in than machines and rifles. Technology has greatly accelerated since the war, leaving China lagging behind more than we were 30 years ago. To fill in this gap would require years of investment, but we might just be able to get the Kickstarter from the Americans. Nice. Since we have an intelligence agency, and we're going to get a guy here soon, we can help lower resistance, hopefully. Revenue the hump. After the capture of the Brummer Road, China fought on with the Allied forces through the Himalayas. Though the mountains are more dangerous than any of the Jap war plans, we carried on and brought in countless weapons, each one of them proving crucial for retreat. Improvements in aviation and foreign radar and electronics have significantly reduced the difficulty of flight over the world's roof, and so we shall immediately start to pile up, plot suitable paths and corridors. And we shall wait. We shall gaze towards the west. We get 12 IVs, huh? Get some artillery, get some guns, which is super, super important. And we've got one day's left. Nice. And we'll be over there. Although American advisors are normally supposed to act as well advisors, in reality their connection to our military can only be described as thorough. In order to reform our military force of the modern standard, sacrificing some levels of secrecy is again an acceptable deal. It would be surprising, but China's low on manpower. Nearly every non-essential adult readies for war, just yet we only have so much. And thus the introduction of Americans into our command structure can potentially help. Not that much, but hey, that's better than nothing. So we're done with that stuff. Artie, yeah, I get some more Artie, why not? 50, oh my gosh, 15 days, that's really good. Also, it's a 21 day focus. Should I have taken the other ones? I'm not really sure. I still want to lower the resistance here, because it's so it's getting higher every month. And stability is so bad, too. Like, I don't understand why we don't get enough political power. I know it's supposed to take time and all, but man, it sucks. Help lower it for now. We'll be over there, and in, and we will not come back until it's over there. The American presence is made permanent today as Sacco finally established itself in Golden Moon Jinning. And with the problem with their budget mostly settled, we can expect a long term cooperation with the CIA and by extension the American government in the incoming decade. As the Star Spangled Banner, representing the superpower to many people as a symbol of foreign friends of China, gracefully flies, hope is once more rekindled. That we may have lost, but nothing is stopping us from trying again with all that we have. That's such a short focus. At least we're getting political power every day. 0 0.01 sucks, but towards India. The Republic of India has facilitated our communications with the outside rulers of the Raj during the World War, and it continues to be the gateway to the West, stuck in a similar situation. It should be relatively easy to extract support from the Indians. However, this does not mean Sino-Indian relations would be without obstacles and grudges here and there. Daily inherited British claims, and with them, unlawful occupation of Chinese Aksai Chin, as well as Southern Tibet by the Azad Hin regime, but, of course, those remote lands are out of little significance to us, and if forgetting these disputes for now means getting supplies, so be it. The legitimate government of the uh, Republic of India, in Delhi, is the sole nation in Eurasia yet to be occupied by fascists of, or, of Germany and Japan alike. We must develop good relations if we are to receive outside aids. Of course, India will still occupy some territories rightfully to Chinese people, but we'll let those issues pass for now. Re-establish diplomatic relations. Everything's been going smoothly so far, but technically, Qinghai and India still do not recognize each other. As China still recognizes Britain as a de jure sovereign of India, an old order long since scattered. Of course, we would long have made contact if Japan wasn't around to shut us out from the civilized world and continue to threaten both parties. We'll organize to change our diplomatic relations by formally declaring the Delhi government as a sole legitimate governing body of India, while denouncing that of Calcutta, all of which in secret. Due to the pressure from Japan, it is obvious that India cannot do the same thing in reverse just yet. And I apologize for speaking very quickly. It's just it is what it is. I like speaking quickly, just... I don't know. It is what it is. Send forth Wang. Wang Zhi Yi. Zhi Li... Xi Yi. The foreign minister of the Chinese government in exile is possibly thrilled by development of our relations with India. The useless office suddenly ascends to one of the most important posts in Qinghai, connecting the stubborn remnants to outside benefactors. Our previous meetings with the Indian leadership has been mostly representing the war, or the party, or individuals rather than China. We'll allocate some resources towards building up proper state-to-state -state interactions, methods in Delhi, and vice versa for the Indians. Though this action benefits the Xinjiang Conference Group more than Chiang's clique, it's an acceptable bargain to do. Nice. The Tibetan people, huh? Oh, we can course up anyways, huh? Well, we'll see what happens. So wait, Tibetan people. In any given war, maintaining lordship is always harder than conquest. Course Yushi without the need to raise stability and reduce tension. Huh. 
Alright, loosen the border. Any attempt to border the control in the Himalayas is bound to fail, almost as if human institutions as big as nations aren't meant to be middling with affairs of the nomads. And and, and up to this point, saying it's true would be an under, understatement. Instead, what would be more economically sound is to reach an agreement with the Indians that completely unhinges any restrictions placed on our common borders, of course. Within our government, there is a concern in this action potentially compromising military intels, but for lands as sparsely populated and as harsh as Tibet, it hasn't taken a one long guess to guess where the military units will be stationed anyways. And tie in the friendship. Until recently, there is some level of anti-Indian sentiment around a bureaucracy over lost territories, preventing us from truly achieving cooperation with the Indian government. However, unlike the Roman imperialists of old Britain, Nehru's administration has not bullied us into unfavorable treaties. It seems that there's just enough space for us to negotiate the problem of disputed land. L later, that is. Pacify the interior before dealing with the exterior may not be the best to stabilize China of old, but in diplomacy with a potential foreign benefactor, understanding that the concessions are temporary is key to convince some of our more nationalist colleagues. A little bit of lag too, oh boy. And to free Asia. That's just weird anyways, this is this one first. <coughs> there goes Austin. We, have that much we could spend more, but we're not going to. We need as much political power as we need right now. A key tool we can leverage both internally and externally is a common threat of Japan and Germany. The new hegemons of this Western order. In bygone ages, the Chinese and Indians engaged in frequent exchanges of culture and religion that enlightened Asia from ignorance into a golden era of learning and prosperity. In the 20th century, once more shall these two ancient civilizations bind together for an equally monumental purpose that we will outlive Axis tyranny and correct their evils. Minus 25%. My god. I don't like this at all, but occupation Tibet. For too many years, Tibetan regime survived by their false promises. If it wasn't for the terrain and sheer distance, the Qing dynasty and the subsequent republic would have vanished. The Kashag, who consistently worked with the Brits, and then the Japs, who undermined Chinese territorial integrity. No more games this time. Occupation is occupation. Tibet shall be directly ruled from gold mood. Make use of sympathizers. Previous year, connection to the Tibet Improvement Party was crucial in swaying the intelligence, intelligentsia and peasantry, and now it's time to reward their services. Though they may seem like puppets of China, it certainly would be worse if we are to throw off Han officials and call it a day. It would also be a good time to insert some KMT-aligned Tibetans into the new administration, as Chiang's influence is dangerously waning to the other factions. Gaining Tibetan support would be crucial in securing Chiang's dominance. Contact the Dalai Lama. Immediately after the conquest of Lhasa and Shigatse, Dalai Lama disappeared from both the Chinese and Kashaga seems. Captured documents and community keys, however, show some uh, key knowledge that we can exploit. The reason behind Tibet's seemingly unwise hermitism that brought their demise. The 14th Dalai Lama may dislike the Chinese for their invasion, but he despises the Kashaga even more. Saying the political struggle in Tibet prior to the war was more dramatic than that of the Chinese would be a great understatement. The Kashaga are too staunch to will to negotiate with, but the Dalai Lama may be more easily correct. Time to make contact with them, huh? Cleaning up the holdouts. A vast territory that is Tibet means that there is always space for bandits and even worse. Demag Sagris to roam and hide around, stirring trouble and spreading propaganda. And worse yet, they possess great knowledge of Tibet while they have while we have to sometimes rely on British maps to figure out where where. Where's where? A systematic armed survey must commence if we're to understand and thus pacify the plateau. But I want to do the Tibetan people. The battle for Tibet may be over, but the pacification is far from over. Although it seems the Tibetans are yet submissive and are mostly ignorant of what happened to their country, it's only a matter of time before they become agitated by hidden nationalists and extremists to cause trouble. If Tibet is to be peacefully reintegrated, we must take the initiative to root out potential sources of instability. Nice. Core, 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 baby. That's why I'm keeping the political power right now, just in case we need core stuff, so... We're going to rush down this side. Liberate them. While every other state has moved to more efficient, albeit sometimes inhumane, systems of labor, Tibet is still stuck in medieval times, practicing serfdom as it had for centuries, with its peasants serving the land, toiling for day after day, while producing barely enough for the land to maintain itself. This ancient institution, no matter our view in Tibet, must be removed and restructured, and, of course, slaves liberated. To avoid backlash from the population, this will be executed, but its re results inevitable. Seize the lands! Actually, how bad resistance? So getting 10% less resistance here is a good idea, so... Get more compliance to expose the Kashag. In portraying ourselves as the liberators, the misdeeds of the Kashag can be exposed in the right light and amount to shift their anger. Buddhism isn't a religion promoting material wealth, then how come the Kashag stuff their vaults with gold when the masses have access to essentially no sanitation and education? How is it then that Kashag refuses Dali's proposals, a figure so sacred and so righteous? If these are not enough, we can always mysteriously discover some as well. Tibetan autonomy. We must admit Tibet is simply impossible to govern like any other province for now. Tibetan culture and society is too alienating for the Han to even attempt to understand, and the unrest is all but too massive. They will get their precious autonomy, but unlike the 19th century, when they do whatever they want, this time they will keep a tight leash on most affairs, preventing Tibet from ever communicating with anything with the outside world without passing through China first. It's a land too vast and too alien for China to govern efficiently. Destroy the Kishaga or not, autonomy must be guaranteed after all, it's on the constitution. Nice. Lose some political power, that's alright. 
Yeah, 20% more land attack is very good. Uh, so how much do we need to core this now? Is it still the same amount? 75% still, huh? I've given up on this place, so it doesn't even matter at this point. Um. Okay. We don't have to worry about stability. We can finalize modernization. Did I just core you? No? So, we finished the modernization. Is that good or bad? It's not a core. So... Hmm. Secure Yushu. Well, I'm getting, this is a core anyway, so... Yushu is one of the three historical regions of Tibet, yet due to centuries of assimilation and colonization, it's far from being entirely Tibetan. Significant number of Hui, Huan, and other minorities are already present in Yushu for decades, especially in the towns. Uh, as resistance has mostly died out in Amdo, it's time to reintegrate our administration to the Qinghai government for the first time in 10 years. Wow, look at that debt. Yeah, I don't know, man. I us having a, a mechanic like the debt mechanic right now for us, it seems like a bad idea, but... Whatever. <sighs> Whatever. We have to Yushu. Qinghai Unified, why not? It's finally done. Miss Ma Bufang's somewhat questionable legacy has been defended by his son, and injustice forced upon China avenged. Once more, it's Qinghai Province whole, great achievement on a perpetual march against the Japanese. Everywhere on Gold Moon and Jin Ying, people rushes out for one of the biggest celebrations ever, dwarfing even that of New York, or New Year at least. Truly, we are on the right track. The meeting. Much to the surprise of even our most senior politicians, Dalai Lama is willing to come into the light, knowing well it can mean that his capture or even death. It didn't take long for us to find him, who intentionally stayed back in Shigatse, and were unable to catch up with other members of the Kashag, even if he was on his own, his words are stronger than a thousand soldiers. As a divine figure, the Dalai Lama was revered by all Tibetans as both a leader and a spiritual refuge of some sort. When they encounter problems, they look up to what he would do, and if they were to rebel, they would of course need to know Dalai Lama's stance on the issue. That is absolutely crucial for us to secure a good deal, while making just enough demands to advance the grip on Tibet. Naturally, it may appear that appeasing Dalai Lama will appear to be the top priority, but that may given Tibet the same power, the same power to use against us before. Should we really give him a second chance? Let's not waste this one opportunity. Currently, no results but, or events, but it will be added later. Um, just in case, we're going to save. Well, at least we got one of these places core. I'm glad I didn't core that area. Because now we got to just burn all of our political power and go to this other area. So, that, this is a core, so... Um, actually, can we not do any reforms here? Is that a- wait, should we core that- Um... Cause we got no reforms here, we got a lot of reforms here. What's the point of doing this if we don't have enough political power anyways? Like, we might as well not even do it until we get more political power, right? Theocracy must go. He doesn't seem agitated. We can stay. Be very pleased. Dismantle of the old system. Um, theocracy must go. Tibetan government can stay. This time the religious order will be monitored real closely. I think this one's probably the better idea, so if you wonder about this one, please go ahead. Tibetan government can stay. Tibetan government, the Kashag, is one of the last theocracies on the face of the earth, save for some Middle East kingdoms. And even then, it's different. Instead of a divine king, the Tibetan theocracy originates from Buddhism, and thus does not necessarily have an almighty theocratic leader like popes or caliphs. Instead, Tibetan government is much more like horizontal, but also highly involved in the religious order, yes. The Kashag is a source of many trouble, but it would be better to show mercy. Throughout the past decade, the Kashag has always been trying to portray us as devils and barbarians only here to destroy the sacred tradition. Beyond some, most of the Kashag are part of it just to make a living, much like the Chinese counterparts. Showing our goodwill can potentially seriously improve our legitimacy. We're not finding this idea very entertaining, but it does not seem angry when this proposal is brought forth. If you go all the way to the left side, what would happen? Later change the culture and comms and Yushu. Showing the mercy. Well, we'll do that one. Separate the Lama and the state. Dismantle the old system. Um, doesn't find this idea very entertaining. Dismantle the old system. I kind of want to dismantle the old system. The government can stay, but we're going to dismantle it. That makes literally no sense. Show them consequences? But we'll show them mercy. I want to assimilate them, so we'll dismantle the old system next. Oh, with the Tibetan regime. It's a legal grip on Tibetan lands and people. The betrayal of China has proven that this self-proclaimed stateless is nothing more than the vanguard of Northwestern reaction. No more communication is needed. All aspects of the Kashag, be it religious or not, must be stripped of power immediately. Their misdeeds must be investigated, and the wrongdoers must meet their fate. And I do mean immediately. But show them mercy. If you're wondering about this one, please go ahead, but... Show them mercy. 
Our war with the Japan has resulted in hundreds of dead on our part. All good men that survived the slaughter by the Japanese only to fall in a foreign land. However, as a civilized government, we will not let hate and vengefulness occupy our thinking. Too much blood has been shed. Enough is enough. We'll extend the olive branch, and hopefully they will buy it. If you want to safeguard the ethnicity, please guard ahead, but we're not going to care about that. Assimilate the plateau. Tibetan people, a nation protected by their ancient lands, have been prospered, and at times grew so strong they could challenge the Middle Kingdom. And nowadays, this threat remains. And thus, we must begin systematic sinification of the Tibetan plateau and surrounding provinces. Again, this will be done slowly, but the Dalai Lama and all Tibetans would inevitably discover our schemes. What can they do? They are a fragile nation with only so much and so few methods to counter us. It's only a matter of time we can promptly end the age of Tibet. They will not find this idea very entertaining, but we balance it out, man. Very pleased, not pleased. Very pleased, not pleased. So, what do you want me to do? Like, bruh. Bruh. I guess for this one, we can just lower, like, tension. That seems like all we can literally do, so... Because getting more stability now would just w be wasteful. Just lower tension as much as possible. There goes Harold, Harold Wilson. Hello, Harold Wilson. Assimilation, please. Please, please, please. But happy now to 65, everybody. And then I guess we'll do the Dalai Lama's response. And so ends our meeting. The events and negotiations occur within or without this conference have all led to this point. This historical point. The question is that everyone's eager to ask and discover its answer. What is the living incarnation of Avalokitevara? We wait for the response. Hopefully it's not bad. Of course, we were, we weren't very balanced. It was a very, very balanced approach we went with this time, so... Follow it up with what? The Year of the Snake. The Year of the Snake or Yisi is coming the next day. The conquest of Tibet would be without a doubt displays their determination in reifying China. Our bright future awaits, comrades. With survival secured, some of the old scores must be so. The response. With the Dalai Lama and his followers leaving the conference, the intense arguments in the room suddenly die down. The best we can do is only to wait. He can simply turn around and escape Lhasa by tonight, but Ma isn't planning to do anything about it. And so no measures are taken to imprison them, for it would only escalate the situation. As the day breaks, we await. He returns to sign the treaty. Without summoning him, Dalai Lama presents himself to the temporal government, much to the local official's surprise and pleasure. It seems finally we can reach some level of understanding and bring forth a golden era of coexistence. Good, one less trouble we have to deal with. Nice. War support and stuff. We're not going to give you freedom, but you know what? It's okay with us. What? Is that it? No. No. What? No, that can't be it. Please don't tell me that's it. This is this is this is so well made so far. No. No. I didn't want this to be the end of this. Seriously, this is this has so much potential to be great. So much potential. You know what? This is really the end. I and mean, we were doing really well. I wanted to go to war with the rest of the groups. I want Xinjiang. I want Hui with us. No! This is actually one of the, the one of the rare mods, or at least sub-mods, I've, I've played before that I want more. I want to see what else can be done. Is there is there a way that we could, like, talk with the National Protection Army down south of us? So, you know, southeast of us. Is there a way? Will there be eventually some interaction with, the, uh, basically, Yunnan? I think that'd be awesome. Because then you have, you know, the Republic of China, contact them, you know, play around with other people. But since we're since we here, let's use cons commands. Can we at least, like, lower this stuff here, or something like that? Like... It doesn't matter to me. There you go. No, that's like connection final modernization. Can you actually do that now? There you go. Cool. And we'll do the same thing here. But oh my goodness, this is this is cool. Um, what else do we need for this? CP? No. Um, there you go. That doesn't matter since we got the PP for it anyways. Since we're using cons commands, we can't do this one yet. Um, we can't do this any of this stuff yet, huh? And over here, it doesn't matter. Just use consequence for now. I guess we can only do one reform at a time, huh? Final modernization, and then you can court, give it a few days, I guess, something like that. Look at all the GUI that's set up. Now, I didn't know earlier that this wouldn't really do too much for us at all right now. I mean, it's really nice. It really didn't change. The cooperation looks really nice, but there's really not much else there. So now I can do another reform. I guess you have to wait a few days, huh? Final, mo finalized modernization. Um, it's very weird. Are we not supposed to? Are we going to court yet? Or oh, uh, the yuan went down a little bit more. Okay, so then we eventually get cores and stuff like that. So that's not too bad. Yushu is also a core, so I guess we just have to wait. But there's probably not much else here, I guess. So yeah, awesome. This has this mod has so much potential. I'm, I'm a little disappointed right now that we can't do much else, but you know what? It is what it is. But if you enjoy the campaign, the very short campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. And let me know what you think of this mod as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.